Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about making your bow changes very smooth. So there's quite a skill to learning how to make your bow uh, changes very smooth. Uh, and let's have a look at the arm action um, and see if that will help us by understanding it. Let's just leave the, the heel for now, because once we can do it in the middle of the bow, then we can learn to do it at the heel. So let's just start with the middle portion of the bow. So we want the sound to be more or less continuous. And that's one of the reasons why we need to learn to cushion. Uh, but if we make the movements of our cushioning, in other words, the fingers cushioning, uh, the change of bow, and we move our wrist a lot and we move our arm a lot, um, it makes it much more difficult to control. Um, let me just show you. It's almost impossible to um, disguise the bow change or to make it really, really legato. Um, so let's go to the bow hold and try not to have straight fingers or fingers or leave your hand too high away from the, the bow. Try to cradle the bow as close to your hand as possible, like that. And if you can actually touch the bow with your the inside of your first finger, just right there, curl it round, um, and then put the pinky on top, just leave the rest of the fingers to arrange themselves. That's pretty ideal, right? Uh, and don't spread your fingers out too much because it, it makes your fingers incredibly rigid. Now, there's another very important thing about uh, how you hold the bow and it's how high your arm is. Now, you may have noticed that I have a, quite a high um, bowing arm, uh, like this. I have a lot of height here in my bowing arm and a, a rather straight wrist. Now, there's a good reason for that, apart from the fact that I was taught it like that. But as a matter of fact, I'm quite a small person. I'm five foot one and I've got rather narrow shoulders. So it really helps me to have control when I sort of suspend the bow from my arm like that, uh, rather than have a lower, um, a lower arm and a, a bent wrist. So it really depends on your um, physique. If you're a very large person, um, it, or a, larger than me anyway, um, you might find it more comfortable to have a lower arm and a more bent wrist. Um, but for me, the control aspect of everything working together, um, I mean, there is some movement in my wrist, but it's never, I never kind of break the line between the forearm and the back of the, uh, the hand. Uh, there's always a connection there. I always feel that there's a sort of suspension. The bow is just suspended from my arm rather than almost like the bow like this feels as if it's gripping the string more. It's more to do with bow weight, whereas I'm controlling the bow by suspension. So as you can see, there are massive differences uh, between different the needs of different physiques to control the bow, how to relax, how to do everything. So let me talk about, first of all, if you have a high bowing arm, um, where the change of bow really comes from and how to cushion. So. so if you were looking carefully at my arm, you could see that just before the change of bow, um, everything is the same and just before the change of bow, my elbow and my forearm start to lead in a different direction. It's a very, very slow 
gradual thing, but you can see it if I if I exaggerate it now, you'll see that where the change of bow is being led from is a slight anticipation with the elbow and the forearm and the hand follows by cushioning, the fingers follow by cushioning and it's actually very valuable to um, have a look in the mirror without the bow and try the movement in a sort of larger way, in a, a more exaggerated way. Okay, this is very exaggerated actually because the bigger the movement really, the harder to control. So it's quite a subtle thing. Um, so have another look at a different angle and you will see the action of the forearm and the elbow. Now, the further up the bow you get, obviously the lighter, so you hardly need any movement at all in the elbow. You don't need that much help. You just need to gently allow your fingers to cushion it. So it's a question of listening and practicing very, very smooth changes. And the key to it is uh, keep the sound exactly the same all the way up. So don't lighten it as you go in anticipation of trying to change the bow. Just keep the tone and the dynamic exactly the same. And then it's a, just a tiny little um, cushioning using the fingers. And another way to practice uh, getting that finger action is again off the, off the violin and just do it in front of a mirror. And you can see it's almost like uh, something trailing in the water, that the fingers are sort of slower than the hand, and that's where the cushioning comes from. But the action uh, with a high arm does come from the forearm, the elbow, like that. But really, don't exaggerate this except if you're away from the violin so that you can actually start understanding the the movement of it and how it actually works. It's so valuable to mind the violin away from the violin because all the the mind is able to absorb and, and observe what's happening with the actions and they don't need to be um, as subtle. They can be quite big and then once you understand it you can make it smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course, when you go to the violin, you add listening to yourself and listening to the, the sound until you get the, the smoothness that you want. So let's talk about uh, having a, a bigger frame and a, a lower arm. Um, now the same thing applies to um, the fingers and the hand, even if you have a, a, a lower arm. Try not to allow your long, long fingers to get away and be too far away from the bow, really. The more control you have with more of your fingers, the better. Okay, there are a lot of very tall people who are very distant from the bow and play almost with their fingertips. And it's maybe harder for them to um, wrap their hands and curl their hands close into the, the bow. So do it as much as you can. So this is the larger person's version with a, a lower arm and a more curved wrist.
with a lower arm, the, the uh, wrist is very important because it acts almost like a pivot to, that, to the hand. So the wrist moves a lot more than my version. So there, it's pushed out and curved like that, and then it's pushed in and curved up the way like that. So there's bigger difference in the, in the wrist. And if you're comfortable with that and you find you can control everything, that's absolutely fine. So there's no one way of doing this. There's experimenting and having a bit of knowledge um, so that you can make informed choices. Really, That's what practice is all about. It's about slowing down and exploring with bits of knowledge and bits of um, experimentation that you want to try out. Uh, because we're always looking for some, some way to do, do it better than we're doing it now. And to turn it into a habit. Um, they're the best habits to have, really. So I hope you enjoy uh, your lovely smooth bow strokes and I hope you enjoy your experimentation during your practice. And I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.